Blessed be the God of our salvation. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, ignoring your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the selfishness that enslaves us, of the selfish things we have done and the selfish things done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tri- tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. The Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become to them in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, Give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. 
Jesus said to her, you are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said, to, said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You will worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Jesus then, his, just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no, one, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot, be, he cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and you will see the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I, send you a reap that for, I sent you to reap that for which you do not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever have done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. John, John, John. I love the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. How do you read that in plain English, right? In the beginning was the Word and the word became flesh. The literal translations in John are always very expandable. They have many, many meanings. And John capitalizes on the fact he's had time to ponder what has happened in Christ's life. Last week, 
or previously at St. James the Great, we talked about Nicodemus, who came to Jesus in the dead of the night and asked what he was all about. And Jesus told him that he needed to be born again. Literally? No. From on high. This morning, our Samaritan woman comes in broad daylight at noon, high noon. These two scriptures are bookends. And if you unpack this a little bit this morning, John is full of meaning and rich text that you just, it's just so much to cover in such a short amount of time. In a way, I kind of chuckled to myself when I was studying, going, John's kind of like the early match.com. <laughs> when you start reading the very beginning of this text, it says that Jesus went to the well of Jacob. The forebears Moses, Abraham, and Jacob met their foreign wives at a well. Jesus is at a well, and a foreign woman comes. I think that's brilliant of John. John is setting a code, secret code. Let me tell you about the real bride for Christ. So she comes and she coyly talks about, almost like they're dating. Well, what do you think? I don't know. What do you think? It is a different take. He knows her. He's thirsty, but she is deeply in her soul thirsty. Women of her time were considered property. They had no right to vote. They had no legal right to anything other than if their husband died, they had to marry the next brother. And if that husband died, they had to marry that next brother. If that husband died, they had to next... And a woman could not divorce her husband. The man divorced the husband. Jesus says, you've been five times divorced. Now, either she's a terrible cook <laughs> or she's had horrible luck. Or there's a deeper meaning in that the Samaritans had five gods. We don't know. We don't even know her name. But the contrast from Nicodemus and the Samaritan, I believe, is what John was after. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a Jew, a keeper of the law, and a Samaritan, a reviled offspring of Judah, where Jews thought they were unclean. A man, a woman, in the dark of the night at high noon. Someone pure, someone soiled. It's that black and white line. So she comes to Jesus, and like all of us, when we come to Jesus, we have a well inside of us, and we thirst for the truth. She's had a rough life. And most of us have had our problems too. We come thirsty. Jesus says, I'm going to give you living water. Water that will never quench the thirst you're after, but will absolutely quench the thirst of your life. And she says, I want this water. Nicodemus never could quite get it. Remember the, he, last week, Jesus goes, Oi, vey, don't you get this? This woman gets it immediately the disciples come and they're horrified that he is with this scarlet woman absolutely horrified how could you do this we've built up the marketing strategy for you we've got everything going into print we you're the messiah you're coming to save the world and you blow it by sitting with this woman and talking to her John is trying to say that Jesus is coming for everyone, no matter of stature, race, creed, 
color. From the law of Nicodemus to the Samaritan woman with five gods. Now, during this Lent, this is our time to kind of evaluate what our gods are, where we're coming from, how much we have piled up in our hearts and absolutely made our well dry. What are we hungering for? How can we go to Jesus and get this living water of truth, grace, and love to cleanse our hearts during this 40 days? 40 days in the wilderness, as talked about in the Old Testament, where the Israelites are complaining, oh, I don't have any water. They weren't even getting it. In the wilderness of sin, don't you love that? It's actually a place. It's like 40 miles north of somewhere, I don't know. But they're complaining about no water. And, and Moses is just kind of like, oh, come on. We'll make it. But they're really after the physical satisfaction where the Samaritan is after the spiritual satisfaction. I think it's a beautiful scripture for us to think in terms of Lent of the two sides of everything. You have the pure, the, you know, the, the Jew, the, the Pharisee that absolutely keeps the letter of the law. And you have the Samaritan woman. And we can identify with both at different times of our life. But Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is ultimately saying this morning, the kingdom of God is here. And the kingdom of God is where everyone will be welcome. And our job on earth is to bring in the full kingdom. Weeks ago, we read about the fall of Adam and Eve, where the kingdom of God, they were outcast because they eat of the tree of good and evil. Jesus' purpose in coming to us was to reconcile us to that garden, to the kingdom of God. And over and over and over, he is showing us the way of the kingdom of God. And John is brilliant this morning. If we take this literally, we're missing so many points of this gospel. Jesus at the end says, the harvest is full. The reapers are going. We need to get out there and bring in the kingdom of God. That is our purpose. And during Lent, our purpose is to evaluate our lives so that we can be more enabled to go out into the kingdom of God. Remember we had the scripture with Nicodemus where he said you must be born again and we talked about how that is misused. Jesus isn't saying go out there and hit people over the head and say you need to become a Christian. Jesus is saying look at these examples and look how that Samaritan woman ran to her village and said I have found the truth. There was a transformation in her life. People see the transformation in you. They don't really want to see a Bible hitting them over the head. When we go out there, the transformation in you invites people in to Christ. You are the example. You are the ones who can live out the gospel and pretty soon people go, where do you, what do you do? What do you, because they're invited in to your whole being. They see your way of life. They get it. We become missional when we go out and we live the life of Christ. And Jesus is giving us examples of how everyone is invited into the kingdom. Whether you had five husbands or you're living with someone right now, he doesn't care. God is saying, let's look at your future. Let's go see how we go and bring in the kingdom of what he was sent to do. This Lent is a perfect time to evaluate how you are walking this journey with Christ. 
as we're work, walking toward the cross with him this Lent, as we're carrying this cross, as we're being more observant about who we are in Christ, that's what this is all about. This is about making your life ready, willing, and able, full of grace and love, to go out there into the world and live like Christ. Amen. And now let us stand and proclaim the mystery of our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, as Moses prayed for water for the Israelites in the desert and the Samaritan woman received living water from Jesus at the well, we too pray for the well, that wellspring of water that gushes up to eternal life in our own lives. We pray this morning for our government leaders and those in positions of public trust at all levels in our land. Imbue them with integrity and foresight to lead our country as it most benefits the needs of the human family rather than projects which only benefit a few. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the church universal in all faith communities, the Episcopal Church, all bishops, priests, deacons, and the laity who serve in your kingdom to the ends of the earth. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for peace in all nations in the midst of war and turmoil, especially the senseless terrorism of the two synagogue attacks in Istanbul this week. We also pray for parts of the nation struggling with winter weather. Keep those affected safe and warm wherever they may be. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Let us remember those who struggle daily for survival in our world. We lift up those who need better health, food, education, shelter, or employment. Give them abundance and hope for a better outcome. Loving God, we fondly remember those who have passed on to your heavenly kingdom. Give us the strength to cope on our own and be happy for those who have found eternal life with you. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the wellspring, source of life and truth, Jesus asked for water from the hands of a woman in the land of the stranger. May he teach us to name our need, to love our neighbor, and to worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ who shows us who we are. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
That's okay. And they all run into each other. That's right. You made up for it. to St. James the Great this morning. We're so glad you're here. Um, I think our mugger is uh, occupied. Um, if you have not received a Lenten bracelet and would like one, we still have a couple left over. We actually ordered a few more. Does everyone have one? Charles, did you get a Lenten bracelet? We're wearing, wearing these all through Lent. If you could hand that back to him. And would you like one? There we go. Just as a sign and symbol to remind us of our journey with Christ to the cross. And thank you for just participating in this amazing ministry. God bless you as you give this morning.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, and the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now Christ's work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice and thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, O God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the eyes of the and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come. You have much faith and you who have little. You have been here often and you have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. Because it is the Lord who invites you. The gifts of God for the people of God. journey.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look mercifully on this your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. serve the Lord.